Hey, I'm Carbo Brotherhood. I want to introduce to you the Keltec Sub 2000 Trigger Spring Kit. It's a three spring custom design kit. Comes with a hammer spring, sear spring, and trigger return spring for your Keltec Sub 2000. All three springs are going to work together to give you a lighter, smoother, cleaner trigger pull without compromising the reliability or the function of your firearm. Before we begin, let's take a couple stock trigger pull readings and see what we're starting with. Seven pounds, 6.5 ounces. Let's take one more to confirm. Seven pounds, 0.5 ounces. Parts and tools needed for this build are a Keltec Sub 2000 Trigger Spring Kit by M Carbo, a pair of needle nose pliers, metric set of Allen keys, flathead screwdriver, small, medium, and large punch, and a hammer. Before we begin, let's make sure this firearm's clear. Check the chamber, check the bolt face, check the magazine well. This firearm's clear. Also, for your safety, make sure you're wearing iPro. We first begin by field stripping the Keltec Sub 2000. Take your punch, tap out this rear pin right here. Be careful, it's under a lot of tension. Remove the pin, the buttstock, recoil spring, charging handle, and the bolt. This is critical. When it goes back together, it just goes back like this, it slides right in. Next, we're going to tap this loose. Lefty loosey, righty tighty. Now we're going to remove the C clip on both sides of the cross bolt safety. This will fly off. Not careful. This detent will pop out as well, so be mindful of that. Like I said, those C clips will fly off. Do your best not to lose them. Now take your Allen key set, two and a half millimeter, and remove all these screws. This is the most time consuming part. Good thing is they're all universal, so you don't really have to worry about mixing them up. Taking the screws out on both sides. Once all the screws are removed, flip it around so the ejection port is facing up. This is the side that we're going to be working with. Take the handle of your hammer, stick it in the magazine well, and just use that leverage to pry it up a little bit carefully. Take your flathead screwdriver and pry up here. Where the barrel meets the receiver. Then slowly 
pull the two pieces apart. Try to keep as much intact as possible, but it's not uncommon for stuff to kind of fall apart inside. It may look a little intimidating, but it's really not that bad, especially after you've done it a few times. Let's go ahead and remove your magazine release. That's just hanging out right there. The best thing to do is go ahead and stick these pins back in place. Um, it's just so it'll make it easier when it comes to installation. When you're reinstalling everything. And these little, these are just your threads that are on both sides where the screws go into. And they've got little plastic inserts here for them to sit in on both sides, so it really doesn't matter. Go ahead and remove your safety. It's probably already halfway fallen out, like mine is here. And that detent, remember that detent's gonna go right here in that hole. Okay, so as you see, just the basic layout, you've got your trigger, your trigger return spring, you've got your trigger bar, and then you've got your sear spring right here, your sear, then you've got your hammer up here inside the receiver, and you've got your hammer spring right here. So those are the three springs that we're going to end up replacing. So we'll start with releasing the tension on this trigger return spring here. So just pull up on it, pull up on the trigger, it'll actually release itself. It just comes right out, it's one piece. So trigger bar, trigger, trigger return spring. Real simple, just set that aside for a moment. Then your sear, go ahead and release that uh, sear spring tension. This spring will fly off, so get a good little grip on it and just pull up. Set that to the side. Pull your sear. Pull your sear up and out. Your hammer will come flying forward. So here's your sear. The smooth side will go down. When we reinstall it, this little tit will be facing upward. Set that aside. And you'll see your hammer right here. Pull that right out. It's the last piece we've got to pull out. Here it is right here. So here's your hammer. So the ear, so here's your strike face and the hammer. Okay, it's got these two little angles here. The back of your hammer's got this curve in it. And this is where the ear of the hammer spring sits. So the ear of the hammer spring sits behind the strike face. So just remember that when we go to reinstalling it. Um, that's critical. Okay, put that aside. Make things even easier, we're gonna go ahead and just remove the barrel from the receiver. So separate the two. It's okay if that pin stays in there. Then go ahead and pull out this receiver here. Set that aside. Now that we've got the Keltec Sub 2000 completely disassembled, we're going to work with the non ejection port side of the trigger assembly. Go ahead and make sure you've got all these threaded studs on this side here. Uh, it'll make the installation a little bit easier. So go ahead and set this other piece to the side for now. What we're going to do first is we're going to install the actual hammer, hammer spring, and the hammer hinge pin here. First thing to take notice is the, this is the strike face here. This is the ear or the little loop of the hammer spring. and It sits right behind the strike face. So that's a critical piece. Also notice that this straight leg of the hammer spring comes across the top of the hammer hinge pin like this. So very important, very critical, so just take notice of this. Okay. Go ahead and grab your Carbo trigger spring kit. Pull out your hammer spring. So what we'll do is we'll just pull this hinge pin right out, pull off the stock spring, insert the Carbo trigger spring kit. Remember we want that loop behind the strike face and we want that top straight piece of the spring going right over top of the hinge pin. So there's a straight leg going over top of the hinge pin. There's that little loop 
behind the strike face. And then we're going to insert this pin right here and this little cutout. Push it all in to make sure the other ends of that hammer spring rest behind this threaded stud. Now we're going to insert the sear. Notice that it's got this little tab here on one side and then it's flat on the other side. So the flat side is going to go down, the little tab side is going to be pointing up at us, and it's going to go right on this hinge pin right here. So we're going to move the hammer back, slide the sear right on, and drop the hammer a little bit right there. So this is how we want the hammer to be staged throughout the rest of the installation. It's going to make life easier. I'll show you here in a little bit. Now we're going to install the M-Carbo sear spring. So take the little leg and put that actually on the sear here. Long leg is going to go behind this threaded stud. You want to get this circular portion right over top of this pin here. So you're going to do it in that short leg. Get the little circle over the pin. Then get the long leg in there all simultaneously. Be careful this sear spring will pop off. It's an easy one to lose. So what you're going to want to do is tuck this long leg right in behind that threaded stud. It'll kind of sink in there a little bit and it'll hold itself in place nicely and really save you a lot of time chasing that spring all across your workbench. Before we move on to the next step, go ahead and remove this pin right here. It's going to make life a little easier. We're going to install the receiver into the trigger assembly. Go ahead and take notice that there's these tabs at the top of the receiver, and then there's tabs on the back side of the receiver. Those actually lock into the trigger assembly here. So that's what keeps it in place. So we're going to snake this portion around the hammer here, get them line up, lock right into place. You should hear them clip right in. And you'll know they'll fit snugly in there and then go ahead and put that pin right back in. Hold it all in place. So now we're going to install the M-Carbo trigger return spring. But before we do, let's take a look at the trigger mechanism here. So you've got your trigger bar, your trigger return spring, your trigger. Notice here that the longer end of the trigger return spring is at the top. And it's resting right against this tab right here. That's critical. You'll see the short end down here at the bottom. Okay, so when we install our M-Carbo trigger return spring, we want the long end at the top and the short at the bottom. So go ahead and pull the trigger right off. Pull that trigger return spring right off. Let's grab our carbo trigger return spring. So there you can see long legs at the top, shorts at the bottom. Install that right on this hinge pin. Take our trigger, insert that. Okay, that's what we want. We're drop, drop it right on this pin here. In the back of this trigger, there's a pin that sticks out. It's going to go in this little cutout right here. Let's drop it right in. Also, you'll notice when we're sliding on, this tab of the sear is sticking through the cutout here on the trigger bar. And also, the end of the trigger bar fits right into this little square cutout on the receiver. Okay, so now we want to put tension on the trigger return spring. So just hold on to this long leg here of the trigger return spring. And if you pull up a little bit on the trigger, it'll give you some, some room to pull this short leg around. And once you get it far enough around, push right down. Now you got adequate tension on it. So you see that little short leg is behind this pin. Our long legs resting against that tab on the trigger bar. So you want to make sure that it can go both ways. It goes forward, backward, and it goes up and down. That is so critical. So if you do this incorrectly, you won't get this up and down movement. And the biggest thing that contributes to that is where your hammer is throughout the entire phase of this installation. So you want your hammer to be staged just like this. You don't want it to be fully cocked back. If it's fully cocked back, it puts too much strain on everything else, and then everything's out of alignment. So this is a real crucial part. If you mess this up, you're going to get all the way to the end, you'll notice that something didn't right. And that's exactly what it's going to be. Now we're going to reinsert the barrel. Before we do, if you've taken this sight right off, make sure that little tab is facing 
the rear. It's the tab I'm talking about right here. So insert it back on. And we'll make sure we line up these holes on this stud here. And also be mindful of that spring right there. The trigger assembly. It's going to provide tension. So it'll help lock it in place. Next we're going to reinstall our magazine release. So go ahead and insert the magazine release. This is a little tab here. It's going to go right in this little portion here. Insert that. Take your magazine. Put it right behind it. That'll keep it from falling over. Now we're going to reinsert the other side of the trigger assembly. Make sure you still have this spring here for your magazine release on this half of the trigger assembly. Also make sure these threaded studs are clear in every position because that's what we're going to be inserting. Uh, this one here can sometimes be a little pain. Make sure that hammer spring is beneath this threaded stud. Make sure it's not resting on top of it. So if you have to kind of push it down out of the way, that's what you got to do. Make sure the rest of your linkage and everything looks like it's in place. Sear springs in place. Let's go ahead and reinsert this. And just collapse back together nicely. You get that warm and fuzzy feeling when you hear it clip and snap together. That's what you want. And we're going to go ahead and reinsert these screws while we have the proper alignment. Remove that magazine, don't need that anymore. Flip it over to the other side. Insert the screws on this side. Make sure they're good and snug, don't need to over tighten them. Next, we're going to install the cross bolt safety, but before we do, we're going to need to get that hammer back so that we can actually get the cross bolt safety through there. So go ahead and collapse it. Take your punch, small punch, and just lift up on your hammer a little bit. You just go through that hole there. You see it? Just kind of see that tab. And then take a, take a uh, toothbrush or a screwdriver and work the rest of the way back. And hear it click. Heard it click. Now we've got clearance all the way through there. Now take your cross bolt safety. Fire is going to be on the right side. So we're actually going to go in through just like this. Okay. What you're going to do is take your punch, take your medium sized punch, go through the opposite side and push down on that trigger bar. And that's that little trigger bar popping right up. Okay, get it started just like that. Push up on the trigger bar, and then you're gonna slide your cross bolt safety right in. It might fight you a little bit, but it's not that bad. This is the easiest way to do it. Take your detent, stick it right in there. Take your razor blade, hold it right down, and push it just part of the way through. Not all the way through, be careful just enough to hold it in place and then take one of your C-clips slide it right on there now you can push it through and on the fire side take your C-clip and insert it right on there it's now time for the final reassembly of the kel Sub-2000 you should have a charging handle, bolt, recoil spring, castle nut, pin, buffer, and buttstock. First we're going to insert the bolt. Just take notice that the bolt actually separates into two pieces and goes together just like this, just like a puzzle. You'll be able to read the caliber there on the side. Um, this hole here this goes through both sides. You want to make sure that's visible in the track here so that we'll be able to put the charging handle in later. But the bolt's going to go in first.
And then it helps if you take your uh, punch, just kind of use that to guide it the rest of the way forward. Next, we're going to install the castle nut. Uh, take notice, you'll see these threads on the inside of it, and there's actually no threads here on the uh, back end of the trigger assembly, just a shiny surface from where there was once Loctite uh, or some sort of adhesive. Caltech recommends you use Loctite, uh, so we're going to put some in here. And uh, if you don't have it, you know, I would go get some. Um, that way you're sure that it won't back off when you're firing. So we're going to add that real quick. Don't need to go crazy with it, just in case you need to remove this in the future. But you'll slide it right on. And you're going to twist it on. Even though there's no threads, twist it on good. Make sure that adhesive gets on there evenly. Next we're going to insert the charging handle right in that hole in the bolt that we left exposed. Drops right in. Then the recoil spring is going to go right in behind it. Make sure you insert it all the way. Then take your buttstock, slide that right on. Position it accordingly. There's three holes that allow you different adjustments on your buttstock. Then take your buffer, slide that in. You're likely going to need to prop your rifle up against something. It's under a little bit of tension there, so you're going to have to kind of push it in, hold that buffer, and then drop your pin right into the hole. Good to go. Now that we've finished installing the Carbo Trigger Spring Kit, let's go ahead and do a safety function check. So we charge it. Weapon's on safe. Pull the trigger. Nothing. Excellent. Switch it to fire. Pull the trigger. Excellent. Keeping the trigger depressed. Charge it. Should hear a metallic click. Excellent. Pull the trigger. Fantastic. Now that we installed the Imcarbo trigger spring kit, let's take a couple trigger pull readings and see what kind of reduction we got. Five pounds, 3.5 ounces. Five pounds, six ounces.